Now, J.R. Santana is an award-winning screenwriter and producer. It's a return visit. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. Now, of course, last time we talked about the series The Baloney Trail and the first book in it, which is, of course, called Perpetual Gloom, and the TV pilot that you've done for it. And today we're talking about the audiobook version and I think, you know, it's important once again for a brief overview of this story. Well, yeah, it's uh, the, uh, the Baloney Trail is, uh, is a, it's an intergenerational narrative that spans mm-hmm. 30 years from the 30s right through to the 1960s and set in the United States and, and Mexico. And it, uh, the essential narrative pivots around a nine-year-old girl with, called Shelda who with her younger siblings are abandoned on the streets of Mexico by by their parents and are forced to fend for themselves and find their way back home. And this is all a backdrop of drugs and hotel members of the family. Yeah. And of course, for the audiobook, do you think it's important to have an audiobook? Absolutely, it's uh, it's becoming a uh, you know a standalone platform in its own right. Yes. You know, it's not just a case of a, a narrated uh, uh, a narrated version of a of a print book. Now, mm-hmm. it's becoming some, something that that uh, people are consuming as, as a product in as a product in, in in its own right. Yeah, and for perpetual gloom. I take it we're getting a full audiobook here. We're not getting some abridged version, right? No, you're getting the full book. <laughs> yes. Every word of it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you actually had to audition voiceover artists and audio engineers as well, right? Yeah, exactly. We we chose... Um, there are a number of platforms out there. We chose um, a... CX as our, as our uh, platform yeah. to uh, to basically audition, as you say, to audition uh, people. And in this case, uh, Anthony Sant- uh, Santoro, who we chose, he he, uh, he he did most of the engineering work as it's uh, as as such and editing. But um, yeah. yeah, we 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 auditioned we auditioned um, via that platform. There were there were a few people um, in the running. But we found um, that uh, Anthony's was what we were looking for, and yeah. it was something that delivered atmosphere and dialect for us, warmth, uh, and also being versatile enough enough to um, to distinguish uh, different characters. Yeah, uh, without kind of making complete over for us to get the right voice. Yeah. And just looking at a picture of Anthony G. Santora, he just looks like he's got a really cool voice, doesn't he? He looks very cool, yeah. He, and he has got a very cool voice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he's quite a recognisable audiobook narrator as well, isn't yeah. he? He is indeed, yeah. He's, he's, he's certainly very recognisable. He's got um, a string of credits to his name. And... Um, as an author himself, he also understands uh, the process, and he understands uh, um, how how writing writing words down the page uh, is, is very different to, to reading them. Um, and uh, yeah, so we were very we were very lucky to get it. Yeah, and you mentioned that he did a lot of the audio engineering himself. In the end, were you intending yeah. for that to be the case, or were you expecting it to kind of be two people? We did look for somebody who had had their own um, effectively editing facilities, audio audio editing facilities, because uh, we felt that it would speed the process up. Um, yeah. When we were reviewing, um, you know, a block of a block of work, for example, if there were any changes to be made, uh, that could be done straight away. And actually, yes. to be honest, Anthony did a lot as well as he was, uh, you know, a lot of stuff behind the scenes anyway, yeah. um, as he was reading, so he could auto, auto-correct some mm. of the things that he wasn't happy with. Yeah. And I suppose, you know, voice artists probably are naturally very good editors, aren't they? So, you know... Yeah. <laughs> 
That, that's right. And it, it, it's a great skill to be able to sit down and read, you know, out loud for 30 minutes and yeah. get all the intonation uh, and pacing right and, uh, and not, not trip over the words. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I mean, did he trip over the words sometimes? I mean, did you have to, you know, ask for corrections at any point? A revision process. Um, yeah. Most of the trips that happened, he'd already taken out anyway. Um, he'd mm. already told us about those. Uh, there were a couple of, um, if there was a, a couple of mispronunciations, or yeah. there was a slight um, blending of, of, of words in a, in a in a given sentence, then we would probably just go and go back and re- and uh, reread those. Yeah. Uh, and that's what and that's what Anthony did, just just for clarity and kind of pacing, mm. really. And how did you check his mistakes? Did you have to listen to the full hours of recording? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was a case of sitting down and listening. I think I read the book about three or four times over the course of the, uh, of the sessions. But yeah, it was a case of uh, listening to the recording and following along in the book. So yeah. I, was, I was looking for accuracy, uh, but also how it read and how, how, how it, it felt as an emotional read listening yeah. to it so it was, i was trying to i had kind of two hats on and, <laughs> uh, and, and trying to sort of juggle those um juggle those different aspects you know yeah is that quite hard to do because if i was doing it for example i would probably just miss stuff because i'd be getting tired or bored at doing it for so many hours <laughs> yeah it is time consuming but but the the blocks are broken down. I mean, we would, let's say, have a 30-minute block, but that's broken down into 12-minute units. So um, it is difficult to do. Uh, it was my first experience of doing an audio book like this, certainly editing. So for me, it was a learning curve, and I had to be extra careful to make sure that I, I followed the text and was true true to the words that, that, um, that Shayla had written, written down. But uh, yeah, it, 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 like I said, we were, I've read this book, of, you know, quite a few times. Yeah, um, that's true. And how long did that process take, the sort of going back and forth? We were doing that for a few weeks. Um, mm. I can't recall exactly how long, but it was it, it was it was a few weeks. Um, um, yeah, well, I want to say, I want to say about three weeks. It may have been mm. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, but obviously with the then the the kind of final sign off and, and the artwork and everything like that it, 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 um, it took a little bit longer for everything to go live yeah absolutely and I suppose you know the book better than anyone else maybe apart from <laughs> Sheila <laughs> for every read I uh, I discovered new hmm. new aspects that I'd, I'd missed from, from the previous one yeah absolutely and are you creating artwork for the audiobook as well? Yeah, we had to. We had to. Um, ACX have a um, uh, delivery. Uh, 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 they deliver to to Audible, so so mm-hmm. it it appears in Audible and, and other platforms as well. And one of the requirements was that the artwork, um, or the cover artwork for the audiobook, had to conform to certain constraints and interestingly what i didn't know what i found out was that um for example when he goes an audible you need to leave a section um i think it was in the bottom right hand section clear of any um uh clear for any of the audibles promotional oh. banners or anything like that so if you've got text at the bottom you've got to make sure it it doesn't it doesn't it's not clipped by that little that little um, corner. Um, yeah. So it's those little things that I, I picked up, and we we had when I when we, we first did it, we followed everything, and, and uh, we had to kind of redo it again because some of our of some of our text we, we just was sitting underneath the the promotional banner. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting because you wouldn't really think about that, but I mm. guess there are reasons. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. And if somebody's just listened to the audiobook, do you think they have the right to claim that they actually read the book? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, uh, I think they have listened. Yeah, they've listened to... It's, 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 uh, it's something that 
when we when we read, we we obviously connect the dots in our imagination. We we mm -hmm. visualize characters and um, listening to an audio book, we have that suggestion there as well. And also, we, we've got a different voice in our head. So I would say we, I would say on balance, yeah, we do. We, 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 we do have, we do experience the content, but we, 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 we experience it in, in, in different ways. Yeah. So yeah, we have the right to say that we, we read it. <laughs> yes. I think. In a way. And in where, a way, yeah. Yeah, where can we find the audio book? Is it already out? It is. Yeah. It's, um, it's available on Amazon. It's available on Apple Books, um, Barnes and Noble in the States, mm. and we are are planning on um, also uploading it to some other other retailers and uh, and, and, and outlets as well. So yeah. it's pretty much everywhere. Great. And for the future books, are you planning on doing audiobooks in the same way and maybe using Anthony again? Absolutely. I mean, Anthony's got a great voice. Uh, what I think we would do differently next time is uh, I'm involved in various projects at the moment that that, that have a lot of immersive audio and mm. uh, spatial audio. And that is that is kind of the way forward. And I, yeah. I, I, I just love the idea of creating um, a soundscape, an atmosphere. Uh, of, of different sounds and 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 we all as a as a listener we we all intake we can almost kind of be in, in a in a three dimensional environment. I'd love to be able to explore and experiment with something like that for the uh, for the next um, the next audio books so and maybe revisit yeah. the current one. You know. Yeah, that sounds exciting. Well, yeah, many yeah. thanks for coming on today and see you soon, maybe. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks ever so much.